Hi everyone and thanks for being with me. Look, I just want to say thank you to all those people that signed up to subscribe to my channel. Uh, I, did a, I did a post last week and it was an astounding success. I was so amazed, I haven't been able to sleep for nights. Uh, it was tremendous, I uh, had uh, over 80,000 views. And I just can't, I just think that I don't know how in the hell I'm ever going to get as many people as interested in my videos as I did that one. It was astounding. So thanks for all those people that viewed and particularly for all of you that subscribed. I really appreciate it. It was great. But I want to talk about politics again, but this time I've been thinking a little bit about history and what does history teach us? about politics and what does it teach us about the mistakes of the past and how if we if we understand those mistakes perhaps we'll not, not make the same mistake again so i was thinking particularly of the british prime minister chamberlain and how in 1933 he with a delegate of others attended a meeting between the French Prime Minister, um, the, some people from some of the Czechoslovakia and other countries, and Hitler. And uh, as a result of that meeting, even though they didn't trust Hitler, not at all in fact, and that they were wary of uh, his warmongering tendencies, they, and uh, the fact that he accessed Yugoslavia and, or Czechoslovakia, whatever it was, I'm not a historian, so I'm not an expert on any of this, but uh, they let him do what he needed to do and uh, suffered the consequences, hence World War II. And the reason why I wanted to talk about this is that uh, sometimes I think we just don't push back enough against those people who have similar sort of rhetoric to that we see from Hitler. And basically this is because our politicians are shit weak. And there's a few politicians that particularly are that way. And look, what I'm referring to in this instance is the way we're acquiescing to anything that Trump says and how we tend to dismiss many of what Trump says simply as being Trump being Trump and that he will never actually implement any of the bizarre suggestions that he's made from rounding up immigrants, locking them away, um, tar tariffs and some of the weird ideas he has around tariffs and uh, many of the other crazy suggestions that he has in terms of abortion and so on. I won't go into all of them. I'm pretty sure you must know what they are. But my point is that there are too many politicians who ignore what has happened just as Chamberlain did. And as a result of that, people like Trump, people like Hitler, people like Orban, people like Xi, get away with doing horrific things, not just to their own people, but to other countries as well. And I'm really disappointed in people like our ambassador to the US, Kevin Rudd, and how Kevin was at one point very critical of Trump, but now he's licking his ass. But, and now I understand that there could be diplomatic reasons for this. And I think this is the problem. The problem is that we're not calling out these people for their behaviour. And we are uh, allowing them to get away with being able to say ridiculous things, knowing that at the end of the day, they're just as likely to enact them. That it is true that Trump and uh, Project 2025 will be enacted if he wins. And what does that mean to us? What does that mean to Australia? What does that mean to the population in general? What does it mean to the world? It means that the United States is going to become more and more isolated because we would have to make decisions about whether or not we want to associate with them or not. And there are things like AUKUS in particular, which is an investment we're making in the United States in a sense in terms of submarines and also the UK that we'll have to think about. Or do we acquiesce to the point whereby we offer money, as we're doing with AUKUS, 
regardless of the crazy person that's in power. And I think it's about time that we started to make a stand. Now, I know that one could argue that the Democrats have been pointing out some of these um, bizarre qualities that Trump has for, for years, but are they aggressive enough? Well, I don't believe that they are. I think it's about time that we started to up, up the ante a little bit, regardless of what happened last Saturday. And the reason for that is that Trump, at this particular point, I believe, believes that he's going to win this election. And he's going to wind back to some degree, not entirely, but to some degree, the uh, devastating rhetoric that, is, uh, that he's been involved in over the last six years. But I think it's an opportunity for us to continue to remind others and to remind our politicians who are supposed to represent us of the danger that this man has to his own country, to Australia and to the rest of the world. And the only way this can be done is for our politicians to have the guts to be able to say what they need to say. Now Turnbull certainly highlighted to some extent what he thought of Trump and uh, all power to him, but the point is he's no, he's no longer as influential as he was clearly when he was Prime Minister. Even then one can argue how influential he really was. But nevertheless, there needs to be more people arguing, as Trump, as Turnbull has, that Trump is a danger to his society and to the world in general. And we need to be up in that ante. We need not, just because the man got a scratch on his ear, doesn't mean that we should sit back and be sympathetic towards him because he still looms as a danger to all of us. Let me know what you think about this, you know, and also to uh, subscribe to my channel, ring the bell for further notifications, do what you need to do. But think about the politicians and how they acquiesce to him. Think about people like Nikki Haley, um, think about his, his pick for vice president and some of the things he used to say about him. And why is it these people give in? Why is it that they, they give, their, give away their ethics and their values because this man somehow at some point potentially may wield the power that they wish to be a party to? Why is it? that we allow that to happen. Why don't we call these people out, no matter what side of politics they're on, and start to s tell them that it's time that they stood up for what is right, for ethics and principles. Because if we don't, we are going to find that Trump will get in, that he will do all the terrible things that he's uh, talked about and that Project 2025 is alluding to, and those people will have to sit back and s swallow their pride, do whatever they need to do to realise that they fucked up. We can't allow this to happen. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. In the meantime, take care, look after yourselves, and more importantly, be safe.